Hey, welcome to another little episode of Training Aid Tuesday. Today we're going to be going over a very interesting tool that has many competitors, which we'll also review, uh, the Lightspeed Orange Whip. So they've gone through, it's already into stage two of the same product. Uh, we will be tracing through that. We'll cover a few little aspects of this because I'm a bit of a fan of reviews myself. I always find myself doing a little reviews before I buy something. So it's only fair I try and give you as good a review as I can on these products. We'll be covering a few things. A, the pros and cons of the light speed, what it's meant to do and some challenges that come with that. The workmanship, always how is it made? How well is it made? And last but not least, the value. You know, is it worth what it costs? And also where it fits in in the Orange Whip family because there's quite an extensive range now. All right, so let's dive right in. So here we are with the whole Orange Whip family. And obviously these are another whole set of Tuesday training aids. <laughs> so today we're going to be jamming out and having a look at the light speed. Now, obviously I've got two of them because they have, let me grab one of these pieces. They've already changed the model. They've already made some gains. So this is the original one. Pretty sure it's one of the first ones. It's still got like a screw on top of it. Um, obviously, this came along, the light speed came along way after the original full length orange whip. Then we had the mid size, then we had the light junior, and the mid, and then the wedge came out, and then they had the old putter. Now they've got the new putter, so they've been a busy boys there at Orange Whip Golf. But this is the light speed now. You can see now they've already made the orange ball a little smaller in the latest one to there so uh, it's kind of changed the balance just a little bit in theory made it even probably a little bit more aerodynamic a little bit quicker again oh, tough marketplace trying to go fast and now compare that a normal orange ball compared to the light speed ball you can see the huge difference there and then this ball here is significantly bigger than the other counterbalanced weight now i think it's even bigger than the yeah so it's the biggest counterbalance of them all <laughs> it's really going on about that, creating that incessant and extra speed through counterbalancing. So there you go. It's, the, it's heavier that end than the normal full-size whip, and then obviously much smaller that end. And lengthwise, you know, they come in at about, it's about 45. They will eventually make a version of this that's about 47, at least, inches long. Uh, so it can just kind of compete, or shall we say, blow the other speed trainers out of the water in that overspeed market so that's what it looks like right how does it work what is the purpose of the thing? so they all work based around the concept of overspeed training so the idea that say you have your normal speed and you max out like i'll max out my 99 at about 88 to 90 99 79 about 88 to maybe 90 mile an hour from really going fast um that'll be my max mile for an hour clip at speed and then driver i'm bit of a battler, it only goes maybe 105 to 107 mile an hour top. If you use these sort of tools, and admittedly with that, so you hit seven irons, get maxed out, you have some swings with this, and obviously the way it's designed, counterbalance wise, and the weight, you're able to swing it immensely quicker than your normal club. So it allows you to swing, say your normal speed is, where's the club? Seven irons. So my normal seven iron speed is about 90 mile an hour. So say it's as fast as I can go. Oh, let me make sure I'm not lined here. Let's hit one at 90 mile an hour or 80 mile. <laughs> oh, I'm all warmed up. So that'd be about 84 mile an hour. There you go. Still getting warmed up. If you have the process, actually let's whack that other camera on too. Do -ba do. Where's the cord? If we have this guy going, what we can do, the whole idea with them is not necessarily in warm up, just you'd swing and instantly you're going to go able to swing it at a tremendously faster rate. There's no way in God's green earth I can swing my seven iron or my driver that quick. I just can't. It's a lot quicker. So the whole idea here is it's waking up your fast twitch muscles is getting your body going, whew, wake up, go fast. Because obviously then it's easier to swing faster. So you have like, you know, four or five swings with this, just trying to go at it reasonably fast. 
And we'll get to one of the cons of that too shortly. And then I go ahead and again hit my 7 iron. Without too much amazingness, I would assume automatically, <laughs> assume, automatically my body's probably going to feel like you can go a little quicker. It's like woken up. So speed only increased by one mile an hour. Ball speed jumped up three. Obviously, it's a bit harder. But what it does is it helps you get more speed, more quicker over time. Now, that's the pro of it. It does get you faster. So if you've, I've, over the my little time with it, I found that it definitely does help for giving you that extra top end. Once you've maxed out, it gives you that. But it's only for a fairly short amount of time. That speed, if you just do it at once, like going to the gym once, and you did a whole bunch of exercise once, you're going to get a little boost once, and then that will be it, it will go. So it's a case of using it quite obviously, consistently. You can't, and then obviously on the golf course, you're not going to stand on the, on the third tee, on the par five, and whack out your light speed and swing it real quick and try and magically get some more ball speed. That ain't going to happen. That's not cool. So it's something that you've got to use almost at least two to three times a week similar to the speed stick, stick stuff. And it's going to slowly but surely help your body learn how to move faster. Now, obviously, lately they've just come out with a whole full training series with the orange peel. They've got a system now that with this system right here, they've got a version of this that has a whole bunch of bands connected to it. And they found that obviously like super speed golf that you can't just swing that and get faster. You've got to have a program that you follow and over time you'll get more speed. That's the catch with it. Like all speed trainers, they are not instant gratification. Well, they are instant gratification tools to a degree. You will magically swing it faster, but to take that speed onto you with you onto the golf course takes time. Unless there's one little cheat that they do provide you which can be very constructive and very counter-constructive. And it's a pro and a con. So the pro is, by me using that, I learn how to swing faster. I learn how my body feels when it moves faster. And I can get more clubhead speed, so I can get more distance. The catch is, I don't necessarily always want to swing that violently at the golf ball. There's that fine line between going, okay, I can swing faster this way, but is that the most efficient way to swing it? So when I used that a ton and super speed sticks over lockdown in little New Zealand, we had like four weeks and I just went crazy and I got my seven iron speed because I could only hit into a mattress. I had my seven iron speed all the way from topping out at 88, 89 mile an hour, squeezed it all the way up to like 94, 95 mile an hour. And obviously that was in a way, it was teaching me that, oh, and I had my little radar going and I found obviously I can get more energy from loading up better, more sign extension, using the ground more, exploding more. So I was hitting seven of the face seven lines. Ball speed for me was way higher. But then I went and played golf with that and after lockdown, and obviously dispersion was everywhere. Distance control was tough. So there's this fine line between, and since then I, I stopped using it because I only sort of play once a week, and then found that within now, four weeks later, my club speed's sort of gone back to where it feels comfortable. And I know now, though, if I want to get that back, I have to do a weekly program of using it. Now, by itself, this will give you more speed over time. We're talking three to six months of using it three times a week. It will teach your body how to go faster. Will it teach you to have better technique and hit it straighter? No. <laughs> well, not. If you are interested in buying this sort of thing to get more speed, because it will give you more distance, maybe not straight, maybe more distance into the forest, you want to connect it with at least either the mid-size whip or the full-size whip. Now, anyone who's selling them, myself included, will always have like a duo package now. So where you would buy a heavy whip with the counterbalancing the heavy orange or the mid-size, which is obviously better for feeling more like a golf club, and then the light speed. And how you would do that is you would do your warm-ups. Hopefully, you at least get 20, 30 swings in at least three, four times a week with it. Your warm-ups and all the practice you can do before you even play, say, Saturday morning, going out, little 
10 minutes before you play. You have your swings with this. You get used to feeling what the swing feels like. And if you're using this tool as a training aid, which you perfectly can, I've made a little video series on how to teach yourself how to swing the club a little better using the orange whip and the reference points that it provides with the orange and the gold. And We're not going to get into that now, but you'd use this to warm up. And, you know, you, you find what the swing feels like. And once you know what you're trying to do and what you're trying to feel, which this tool does brilliantly, which is why it's such a successful training aid, the Orange Whip itself. You see the tempo that you want to feel. You can feel the swing path. Depending on the, the full size or the mid-size, you can really start to feel what swing direction you're after, especially if you have some guidance from your coach. Then you can go ahead and grab the light speed, and you know what path and face and what feels you're looking for, and you go, okay, those are the feels I'm going after. Let me see if I can feel those same movements with this. It won't feel exactly the same because you haven't got heavy and slightly lighter, but still heavy. You've got kind of heavy and light. So whatever it's doing is going to go way quicker, but at least you have a blueprint to work towards. So you start with rhythm and tempo, and then you finish off with speed. And if you were to do that, you know, three to five times a week, you're going to increase your speed and see over time now it's not the only one on the market that does it you have your let me grab them got all the toys oh you got grab out the old super speed golf series so here's the super speed guys which are their closest competitors i would have to say and they have because they were getting smoked a little bit by orange whip They've come out with the C taper, which is another whole product, and they've put the counterbalancing under the grip because Orange Whip, as you imagine, have the patent for counterbalancing out and above the grip. So C taper managed to come around that way, and that works in well with the whole Super Speed training series, which is another whole review and videos. <laughs> but the light speed will work really well, I found, and that's a good thing if you connect it with one of the other whips. If it's just a standalone by itself product, you'll get a little bit more speed, but you also get a lot less consistency and your tempo might get too fast, which is not really great. Um, your center of strike will probably disappear because you'll end up finding everything's moving fast and it's so much lighter than your normal club. The matchups and your sequencing and your rate of acceleration from where your body's doing it, it gets tricky. But if you can match it up with any of the, the orange whips, whether it be the compact, the mid-size, or the full-size, I think in this product really has some great value. All right? And that's where I can see it really helping players over time to generate more speed. And that's the catch with all of these tools. You have to remember, it's not going to be a, a one-week or a one-day escapade. You're going to initially see instant results if you're using a launch monitor or a TrackMan or a GC Quad or whatever, or even the, uh, a little any affordable launch one of any kind will give you instant feedback. You go, wow, I'm swinging it quicker. But bear in mind that speed will vanish the next day. And over time, you can slowly get incremental improvement. So that's where the value in these products are, is they will work as long as you do. All right, next topic, workmanship. How well made is this product? Now, I've got to be honest, every single orange whip is fantastic. Um, they're really well made. They never seem to break. They seem to last forever. Obviously, you've got a nice bendy shaft. The ball and all of them, whether it's the old one or the new one, you can always, if you ever wanted to experiment with what it feels like, you can always unscrew the, the top ball and feel what's going on, and then you'll swing it, and you go, oh, wow, it's even lighter again. And then you could pop back on, and you can see the difference of speed gain that you actually get if you've got a little radar of any kind. It's really well made. The bonus that I also really like with the light speed compared to the orange, the normal orange whip, which hopefully they change in time, is if you grab the full size, they actually put a really nice star grip on there. So you can see the, the light speed. It's not only got a bigger top ball, but it's actually got a nice thicker, kind of nice chunky mid-size grip, which feels way more comfortable, way more grippy on your hands. And uh, I'm surprised they haven't put that on standard with all the orange whip grips. I'm sure in time they certainly will be because it's such a better basic thing and I've just started getting some of those star grips in myself now and I can see myself putting this grip on all my clubs so I have that same feel with the orange whip to the light speed whip to your golf clubs which is makes completely good sense 
to have that uniformity throughout the set. It really is really well made product. Um, cost. A little bit of speed gains in hope. You know, it's it's twenty thirty dollars cheaper than an orange whip. So New Zealand dollars still comes in around the hundred and fifty dollar mark. Uh, I'm not sure that is in US dollars. It's obviously much cheaper. <laughs> uh, dollar for dollar, it's really good. Um, you'd be better off buying this, probably buying the two whips, or buying this by itself, and picking up an extra five to ten yards off the tee than you are going to be buying a brand new driver for for twice as much money or three times as much money and having a honeymoon period of more distance, and then it'll all disappear. This is long-term speed gains, uh, whether you're male, female, short, tall, yellow, brown, thin, skinny, fat, doesn't matter. Um, it will help over time. Uh, and that, but that's the one thing I have to keep reiterating with this particular product, as it's not overnight success. And you do, from my experience, which is still limited, you do need to match it in with a different whip or a, a tempo trainer of some kind, whether it be um, the pro, which is that thing you swing, you know, ball in a chain or anything that you can, something that gives you rhythm and balance. I mean, even if you grab like an exercise band when you have this, I've been jamming this a little bit. Obviously, this is a super whippy version of a whippy shaft. <laughs> You know, even if you had an exercise band to connect it with and you'd swing back, wait for it, and then throw, wait for it, throw. That would work really well potentially with then using the light speed. You know, if you didn't want to buy a, a full size or a mid-size whip where you could go wait for it, throw. And at least then you could take the same tempo with some really good speed and then you could establish that into your full swing in your golf game. Because that is certainly the challenging part is taking extra speed and still improving technique as opposed to taking extra speed. Because if you take a fast, ugly swing and you speed it up, man, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> so if you have a good technical swing that needs more top end and you really want to hit the drives another 20 meters further or 20 yards or 30 odd yards further, a product like this can help, but you've got to have a look at it and go, okay, I need to do A, I need to do the work, and B, it's not going to be overnight. It's going to be a timely process. All right, I hope that little bit of content helps. I cannot more highly recommend this. It's right up there with the other speed trainers. I mean, the competition, like I said, is super speed golf. The only other really good guy in the market that's also worth having a look at is the Wish Golf stuff, which also has its own unique little advantages. I've done that review. It's a pretty good little product. Um, it's a standalone product, though. It's not going to have a, a brother or a sister like the Lightspeed will. Definitely look into it. Uh, you can contact me if you want to get a whip, or you can go online. There's plenty of guys all around the world that are selling this product. It's going pretty hot, and uh, as soon as I can get the, the peel that connects to it, I'll uh, definitely do a review on that soon, too. Thanks for your time. Have an excellent day, and talk soon.